previously on D20 Crafts. Alright, so where we left off last time on this project was we got the sculpting done, we got the base coating done, we got some of the clothing done, I mean pretty much all of it. And uh, really what we're working on now is the, the hair and the face, all that, all that jazz. What I kind of did here was start with just blotching on a little uh, white dot for the eye <laughs> and then color dot with a mechanical pencil again because I, I don't have a, any kind of good paintbrush yet that can get that kind of close in detail, reliably anyway. I used that, the mechanical pencil too, to throw on some eyebrows. I just find that's the easiest way to uh, reliably make a tiny little line there. This is probably a good time to mention that uh, really I don't know what I'm doing here with this channel. I'm kind of just, you know, making assumptions on what people would be interested in seeing based on what I like to see. Uh, really I started this channel because, like I said, I couldn't find anyone doing anything like this. This seems to be a huge disconnect between casual crafters and like the professional sculptors with their green stuff and fancy types of wire and all that. Uh, I kind of wanted to, to be an in-between here. You know, really I am a, a novice crafter. I'm not very good at a lot of this stuff. And I kind of just wanted to show easier ways to do it. You know, you don't have to go and buy like a $20 tube of green stuff. You can you can go and get some Sculpty or whatever and uh, some paper clips and just throw together some, some NPCs. And definitely I want to improve from here, but uh, for now, this is kind of <laughs> what I'm working on. So if anyone has any input on uh, if I'm spending too long on certain parts or not long enough on others, let me know. Let me know what you like or what you didn't like. So one of the bigger obstacles with these that I encountered was the hair. Uh, if I'm not making them bald, then what's the best way to do it? I could sculpt hair, I could try to do like paper towels and stuff. I think I used paper towels on my last build. Uh, what I found to be the easiest way here was to take a cotton ball and like unravel it and then basically like do drops of diluted paint onto that, that paper towel so that they can kind of make all different tones, but pretty much I tried to do regular like hair color tones. And then using that, that, that cotton ball, I let that dry and then it, it keeps its kind of its fibrous nature, which, which is great because it looks like hair, I think. And uh, you can twist it up for like whatever, for like a ponytail or a braid or whatever. Uh, you can you can thin it out. You can, it, it's just very easy to apply. Now with this character, I kind of got her to look a little bit like Helga from Hey Arnold. Head. And it's super easy with the cotton. And I like, this is another one of those things. I've never seen anyone do this type of thing because everyone that seems to be making minis is so good that they can already like sculpt hair, like an in individual, <laughs> you know, like follicle, like, you know, they could do like individual strands of hair and stuff like that. That's way beyond my, my capacity. And I have no interest right now in, in trying to do all that. I think this is just a way simpler way to do it. Like I said, with like a little bit of a dropper bottle, like if you use a dropper of diluted PVA, uh, that's, that's really all you need to uh, to get these to stick together to stick you know to the miniature and and everything like that and as long as it's not too diluted you won't run the risk of making the paint run I use the paintbrush to kind of like put it into place and you know it is a little bit finicky but um, you know ultimately I think this is the lesser of two evils in terms of trying to sculpt hair or something like that the other thing I like too is you can kind of make it look like the hair's blowing in the wind because it's the cotton is so light and uh, you know it's just it just takes the glue so well that you can really kind of make patterns easily. I mean, I'm, I'm confident that I could make like a pretty cool mohawk even. So that one came out pretty good, I thought. Ultimately, I mean, for what it is, for the effort that I put in, very little. That's Lulu. Don't worry about her. She's descended from Blink Dogs. You give it a little tiny haircut with some tiny scissors. And uh, I'm just gonna do some some lips on there. This was kind of a fail in my last build. I tried to do it and it didn't really work. Uh, this one, I kind of just went for it and eh, kind of cringy, but whatever. This guy made his eyebrows uh, way too thick and just looked crappy. So next time I'm gonna use cotton ball for that too. Here we got the uh, going for Doc from Back to the Future on this one. Great Scott. 
And I think my, my main regret here was I, I used a little bit too much glue. I think I underestimated how easy it would be to, to get this, this cotton to adhere. And again, look how easy that is. Just twisted up cotton ball that's, you know, pre-dyed pre with some diluted paint. And uh, you can really get, get the shape of the hair easily, make it as thick or as thin as you want, and just, you know, stick it on bit by bit. I mean, this is way easier than sculpting, and I actually think it'll withstand, it'll be probably be more durable than, than if I sculpted it too, because it's not going to ever crack. It remains pretty flexible and malleable even after it's dried. So for this guy, I just went the route of getting those eyebrows and wow, this guy's got the definitely the strongest brow game I've, I've made yet. And uh, just ended up painting on the hair. I was going for like, maybe he had like a buzz cut or just very short hair. Uh, I was thinking about going balding, but then I was like, eh, give him just a receding hairline maybe. I picture this guy's like bartering over a table or something, uh, trying to get more money for a potion or something or selling, you know, daggers or whatever. And ended up going with a goatee on this guy because I, I think I had just watched that episode of The Office when Michael has a goatee. I just like had that on in the background. So this guy, this guy went from, well, you'll see how it goes. I want to go for a ginger. I didn't have an orange paint, so I ended up like mixing a yellow and a red. Color was okay. I liked how the painted on look went with the last guy, but the problem with him is his head is not well shaped. <laughs> he does not have the kind of head that, his, his skull does not look very humanoid. <laughs> so uh, it's just covered in lumps and stuff. So I knew I was going to, uh, basically what I'm doing here is making like a base coat and then I can put like very, very thin layers of the cotton on top. I went with the blonde and then I was gonna try to darken it with like a wash, like a thicker wash after that. Kind of give him like the, whatever it's called, like a comb over. And again, just I'm loving using that cotton ball here. It's just so easy to, to blend it in with the paintbrush and the, the diluted PVA. It takes paint well, it dries well, it adheres well. I don't know if I mentioned it previously, but his his hammer, he's supposed to have like a little mallet there. That's really just a twisted up paper clip. I built it into the armature so I wouldn't have to worry about it like ripping off or something like that. I mean, I, I think his his hands will rip off from, from the armature faster than that, that hammer will fall off. But um, yeah, it's really just twisted up paper clips and I'm gonna eventually hit that with some metallic paint. Here is when I ran into issues. I wanted to try to paint individual teeth, but these paintbrushes are not good at all. I hope my horrible ugliness won't be a distraction to you. <laughs> so yeah, extremely unattractive miniature right here. Like this is the kind of ugly that will make your, your players burst out laughing if you put this guy on the table. So what do I do? Beards. Beards are a perfect failsafe for any kind of thing that you could mess up. I mean, I could I could have given this guy like a horribly misshapen jawline. I could have not even sculpted the jaw at all and throw a beard on and, you know, that'll that'll be a pretty good stand-in. I think I put it on first 
got like way too thick or just I don't know the coloring was a little bit weird but after fiddling with it a little bit it ends up looking pretty good I think I don't know what kind of music you guys listen to, but this guy's looking to me like a thicker version of JP Sachs. So there we go. I think I've made pretty good progress on these guys. I also made like a little, uh, what was supposed to be a potion for that herbalist there. Ended up just being like a wad of twisted up paper towel. Not too shabby. Like I said, with this guy, I ended up just hitting that hammer with, I put some uh, tacky glue on it to like, I think it was like two layers of tacky glue to kind of like, I don't know, fill out the gaps between the little paper clips. Uh, you know, but well, it was all one paper clip, but between the segments, I guess. And then just kind of painted it over with this metallic color here. This one I think came out pretty good because now she's got like the satchel implying like you know she's got some maybe some herbs in there or something like that and then she's holding what, what looks like it might be like a bag of something maybe there's some like potions in there or whatever some kind of ingredient maybe she like makes your adventurers go on a quest for oh we need this like really obscure plant that only grows in this cavern that you have to go into or like she needs a moss or like you know whatever the heart of a owl bear a heart string or something from an owl bear um yeah just kind of Trying to make out some possibilities there. Here, I use some poster tack to uh, stick these guys on. If you remember them from the last build, uh, I never clear coated them, so it's time to do some clear coating. Keeping the paper clips on there makes it a lot easier to uh, to adhere them. You don't have to stick them on with anything. And another indication of how long this takes me, it is now snowing. It's winter time now when I'm finishing this build. So, yikes. And, oh yeah, always remember to use your PPE. Wear a mask and gloves and all that if you, if you have it. The problem with this is if you read the directions of the clear coating, you'll see that it says that obviously a higher temperature will lead to faster drying time. And in general, drying at all is going to be pretty difficult when it's extremely cold outside. In this case, it was snowing. Here I'm in the middle of a snowstorm, so and I'm out on my porch. I had to use the magic of arcane editing. All right, so at this point it's pretty easy, just using this little clipping tool. Um, I love this clipping tool, it's way easier than anything else I found, and I tried to use like the the clip on the inside of my of my pliers before and ended up like cracking off feet and stuff like that. So I will uh, I'll throw this little micro clipper thing into the description too if, if anyone's looking to get one of these. I'm using these same bases from the last video, which I, I threw in that description. It's kind of a cool way, this is a hundred of them, a cool way to track my progress. And for basing them, I had the conundrum. I wanted it to be clear and very strong, but also super fast drying. Search for a really strong glue that's clear. Sorry, I didn't get that. Clear glue. So I arrived on Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. I think it's really strong, instantly bonds, which I like. And I just don't want to have to worry about standing the mini up and making sure that it doesn't, you know, dry crooked. Basically, you can spend a lot of money on miniature bases that are the same scale as Wizards of the Coast and all that. What I found is these ones are considered counting chips, like for children, or you can use them as like poker chips. Uh, they're not, since they're not marketed for like the crafting community as much, they're just like the same thing, but way cheaper. So here's my next five, and, and together now I have nine. I 
as I'm sure you're aware, I am a very, very small YouTube channel uh, just starting out. So really any kind of feedback, if you can give me, uh, if you throw me a comment or whatever, I will respond. Let me know what you thought of each of these guys. Uh, I'd love a rating on them. Feel free to roast me. I can take it. Your party enters the town and notices several townsfolk congregating. These unarmed commoners seem to be in high spirits, and one even welcomes your party to the town. All right, it looks like that guy's got some shoes on. I'm gonna try to steal them. Well, he's wearing them, but you sly bastard. Roll for sleight of hand. All right, there we go. We now have nine NPC minis total, and I'd say that's a pretty good number to have ready for the table. Probably sufficient to populate a small settlement if players assume that everyone else in town is indoors. Pretty sure that's around the same number of villagers that the first Animal Crossing game had, right? <laughs> Overall, I think these five are definitely a little bit better than my first four, and since my only goal is really to improve, I'd say that's a success in my book. A couple of them look pretty weird though, still. <laughs> I'm also glad that they all look different enough from each other that you can tell them apart should that be necessary. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that prior to crafting these NPC minis, I've had little to no experience actually painting minis of my own, so I think that that probably speaks to how doable this is for someone who is very new to the hobby. Anyway, thanks so much to anyone that watched the whole video. I really appreciate any kind of response or feedback that you can give me on the video. Uh, thanks for tuning in and checking out what I'm working on. Obviously, I'm pretty new at this still, but um, yeah, it's, I have a lot of fun with it, so I'm going to keep going. Yeah, this is just the beginning got these nine so far and I, I feel like I'm making a little bit of progress but uh, hopefully they look less and less weird as time goes on unless it's intentionally weird and uh, shout out to my two subscribers so far a uh, little momentum there yeah definitely subscribe if you find value in the videos and you want to see uh, what I build next